When we talk about things in the terms of sailing, it's a time when you kind of drop anchor in a way and say, we have arrived at this place. We've arrived at this juncture, at this transition. And it's a chance for us to sort of reflect on everything we've been through, how how much we've learned, how much we've grown, every, everything that we overcame to get to this point, and then to take a little rest and to celebrate. Welcome to the What Could Go Right podcast, where your hosts, Eric Orton and Emily Orton. We talk about personal growth and sailing. In 2014, with little experience and even less money, we bootstrapped a year on a sailboat with our five kids, and it changed our lives forever. We tell the whole story in our book, Seven at Sea. On this podcast, we want to help you go from fear to freedom, one adventure at a time. It's the end of the school year, and this could mean a big change for you. Maybe your kids are graduating. Maybe they're heading off to college. Maybe they're graduating from college. Whether you consider yourself a bird launcher or an empty nester, things are about to change. So we just want to talk about some of those things that might be changing for you in this season. I love that bird launcher or empty nester, <laughs> both two sides of the same coin. It's true. I think about when our first child left for college and it was like we had this little forest in our family and she was the tallest tree. And so when she left, the other trees got a little more sunshine and they they grew a little more and it changed the chemistry in our home. And so whether that's shifting and you still have kids at home or whether the last one has moved out and now all the light is on you and your spouse, <laughs> that that changes the chemistry, right? So I was just trying to think about like, what are some of the things that change? It might change how you use your physical space. For sure. Yeah. As kids move out and rooms have become empty, do you then put their belongings in storage or in a closet and turn it into an office? Yeah. That's a big one for me. Yeah. That, that might change. Things might switch around that way. The way that you spend your time might change because obviously you were giving some time to them and now they are not there, but maybe they're calling and need to have a three hour conversation from far away because they're in a new situation and want a lot of long distance support. That could be the case as well. And I guess how we connect with our kids might be different as they move out and they're now a guest at your home instead of someone who lives there full time. Yeah. I'm just thinking about all of the different things that, that might be changing. And I'm especially thinking in our experience, we know that when you have more time together, you have more time to connect and there's more chances to see all of the amazing things about this person you've chosen as your life partner. And it also gives you more chances to notice those things that are different than what you wish. Like, oh, I wish my <laughs> spouse did this differently or was I was expecting pause. you to do it a different way. Or anyway, we've noticed there have been times, you know, when Eric is away from home for a long time and then he's back in home again. And we're like, we are the same people that we ever wore, but because we still have, now we have all this time together, we're having more opportunities for friction. <laughs> well, I think that, I mean, the the most obvious example that I think you're talking about is when I was working outside of the home mm -hmm. and there was sort of the, I had my, I, well, domain is not the right word, but that was sort of like the realm where I spent most of my time and you, your realm was the home without me around, without mm -hmm. my opinions constantly being present, spoken or unspoken. And once we both started working more and more from home, you know, you were still predominantly homeschooling, but we were just in the same space. We had, a, like you said, we had a chance to observe each other a lot more and form an opinion, <laughs> positive or negative. And I think that that was hard for us. And, and a lot of people, actually, I think there's been a cultural shift, Emily, because mm -hmm. a lot of people for many decades, many generations have had this divide. I'll just give a stereotypic example. Let's say a husband goes and he works and he has a job outside the home for many decades and then he retires all the kids are gone now and it's just a husband and wife at home who has either been working at home all along or, you know, at home and then the husband is now there as well. And so there's all this chance for friction or they both come home and they're just, they have 
fewer things to kind of occupy them besides each other and their home life. And I think that that's how it has been for a long time. But now since COVID, the lines between work and home and our marriages and, and all this and our colleagues, that's all blurred a lot. And we're just in each other's space a lot more. And I feel like in the past few years, we're in a situation where we see the life, the lives of our of our family members much, much more than we used to mm -hmm. because we can work remotely in a lot of cases. And also, you know, even if we have a job where we are working with people outside of the home, they're getting to peek into our home a lot more through Zoom calls or what have you. And they see the kids in the background or your spouse, you know, I don't know, like bringing yeah. you a sandwich or, you know, grabbing something out of the refrigerator or, you know, making themselves a sandwich. <laughs> So I just think that there's a, there's a kind of, I mean, I guess the one way to look at it would be transparency, but also it can just be also claustrophobia. <laughs> it could go either way. Yeah. It's true. And in those cases, like, especially if you are home a lot and now your child leaves or your kids are, are all gone because they've graduated. I mean, good for you. Congratulations. Good for them. But also it, it means big changes for everybody. And so it's a, it's a time of arrival, like, hey, we've been looking forward to this for many years. We've worked towards this. We saw this coming and now we're here, right? And it's, that's why people throw a party or have a graduation ritual or, you know, do some kind of celebration. But then it's also gonna be a change for the people who are staying behind. For sure. And I love your metaphor of the sort of the different layers of the jungle canopy and how when one tree moves to another part of the jungle, so to speak, you know, another part of the country, the sunlight comes down to the next layer. And I, we've seen this consistently. For those of you that are new, we have five kids. They're currently 26 to 16. And so a lot of them, you know, as they've gone into adulthood, we've seen the younger adolescents or, you know, even younger kids step into new roles, feel a new kind of confidence. In some ways it's left holes in who's doing what chore around the house and kids have had to level up in terms of, you know, I need, they need to get a new skill set to step into a new role. And, and can I highlight a few things that I think are just fun yeah. about this? You know, when we were younger and we had five kids all at home, it was a bit of a, it was just some heavy lifting. If like, if we wanted to go somewhere as a family, especially if it was going to cost money. If we're going to go to a movie or go just time you know, seven. <laughs> yeah. It's, whatever it is, time seven, or, you know, like we're out, it's, it's been a long day and we're all just hungry. Let's just grab something to eat while we're out times seven, mm -hmm. you know, those sorts of things, or, or we're going to go on a trip and, or we're not going to go on a trip because it is times seven. But now that we're times, we have two kids left at home thing. And sometimes, you know, as our son is more and more independent, it's oftentimes just you and me and Lily, our youngest. And there's sort of a flexibility and a freedom on the parental side. Mm. You know, if we want to take a trip and we want to go, if we want to fly somewhere, it's three tickets or four instead of seven. Or if we want to go bowling, you know, it's just, it's just easier financially, you know. I like the bowling example of like considering how infrequently we bowl maybe that's why we haven't bowled because it would be bowling time there have been there have been <laughs> barriers barriers to the, but you know or like hey let's go let's eat out it's just going to cost double if all the you know or more if all the kids are home and so I, all, all i'm saying is that it it makes certain things easier both logistically physically financial if there are fewer kids at home and that can be kind of fun Right. The quick, hey, let's go. And then everybody's on board and there's fewer schedules that you're trying to coordinate. Yeah, yeah. I've seen the opposite side of it as well, where we used to have all of these fascinating, delightful kids at home and they would entertain and engage each other and look out for each other. And now it's just us and Lily. And so we're back to being like her number one source of entertainment. And if, if we aren't helping her come up with something productive to do, then she doesn't do anything productive. <laughs> YouTube will fill the void. Yeah. So I love it when her big sisters come for a visit and they're like, Hey, Lily, let's do a puzzle. Let's go for a walk. Let's do an art project. And they want to, you know, be engaged 
and you got kind of share share the load. Also, if you're new here, our daughter Lily has Down syndrome, so she is 16, but she's not always self propelled. Yeah. <laughs> well, a couple of other things that I think as we're upon graduation season, and it, it, you know whether it's college or high school or I don't know, graduating from elementary to middle school. I think that there is, as we go through these chapters or these these sections of graduation, it really is, there's some really positive things for parents. We're not there yet. And I don't know if we ever will be with truly being an empty nester or like having launched, having launched all of our birds. But there's this couple that I'm taking sailing next year. They're going, you know, in February and all their kids have left this year they hit the road hard. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're vanning all over the place. They're jumping on planes to Europe. They're taking trains, planes, you know, all the things because there's just this it's freedom. This Also, they're re, they retired at the same time. So it's like kids gone and retired. And, you know, I guess if you do it right, you just like, hey, now we can just go come and go as we want. And you have some flexibility. And I think that that's fun. And I think that it's important to look forward to that, to enjoy it when it comes to not feel guilty about it, to, you know, and to the extent that you want to prepare for it. There's lots of ways to make that stuff happen long before you retire, while you have kids. I mean, you and I talk about it all the time. You don't have to wait until you retire to do that sort of thing, but it does make it easier. It, it is. It is more nimble. The fewer people who are involved in it. For sure. <laughs> And so, you know, I don't know if we'll ever be there, but it, it's getting lighter and faster and easier. So there's the, these graduation ceremonies there. They, they can be bittersweet, but there's also, you know, we don't have to focus on the bitter part. It can be pretty sweet. The sweet part. Yeah. I There's one couple that we know, and I think they had four children. And after their final child graduated from high school, they still celebrated back to school night every September. They would, instead of going to the school to meet with the teachers, they would go out to dinner and celebrate every year. Just like, ha ha ha, we don't have to go to parent teacher <laughs> night anymore. Like those days are over and we'll just go out and enjoy a nice dinner together instead. And I, I just thought that was so fun. Like they loved their kids. They poured into them. And when it was over, they, celebrated on repeat that that season had passed. So I think it's just really a time when, when we talk about things in the terms of sailing, it's a time when you kind of drop anchor in a way and say, we have arrived at this place. We've arrived at this juncture, at this transition. And it's a chance for us to sort of reflect on everything we've been through, how, how much we've learned, how much we've grown, every, everything that we overcame to get to this point, and then to take a little rest and to celebrate. And maybe that celebration is deciding now we're ready to do something else, but just having the opportunity or taking the opportunity to be deliberate about this next season, acknowledging the change, acknowledging the shift, looking at the things that you'll miss, and being grateful for what you had and also looking forward to the things that are now going to be easier or more possible and deciding what do I want to do with this season of my life in this new circumstance? What do I want to do with this one wild and precious summer? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Mary Oliver. She says, what are you going to do with your one wild and precious life? And yet we have, yeah. And, but there's always going to be chapters within that. And so this is, this is a new one for many of you. And do we have, we really don't have any big graduations. Last year was like well, two weddings. And... Yeah, we did. We've have one that's been a college graduation was a big deal. We have another one that's going to be graduating college in the upcoming year. We just graduated our last homeschooler in we, April. Can we, so... can, can we talk about that actually for a second? Yeah, that was kind of a big deal. That snuck up on us because, <laughs> as we mentioned, we have five kids. We've homeschooled all of them. Our youngest, Lily, is now going to public high school because she wants to be around people cooler than her mom and dad. She's been in for two years now. She's finishing her sophomore year. But our son, Eli, 
homeschooled and he just took his GED tests this spring and finished and passed. And so he was officially done with homeschool. And then we just realized, oh my goodness, even though he's still living at home and Lily is going to school and will be for two more years, we are done as homeschool parents, you especially. Yeah, he's been fairly independent, getting a little guidance and mentorship and direction here and there. And we've done a lot of co-ops through the years. But it, once he passed that final test, I said, oh, he's done. And now I'm done. After 17 years of filing reports, keeping track quarterly of the progress we're making, sending in, you know, here's our schooling plan, um, making sure I belong to the organizations that in case anything goes sideways, I have legal representation and like just always kind of being concerned about that. Suddenly all these books, textbooks and things I've collected over the years. Oh, that was a very long season. 17 years is a long season. And I just want to do it. And then it just quietly ended. I just want to do a quick re. I, yeah, it did sneak up on us, and I want to do a quick recap for our listeners, just because people often wonder. Our oldest is graduated from college, academic scholarship, all that, and yeah. is working very successfully and happily in a startup, having a great time. She's amazing. Our next oldest daughter is set, set to graduate this fall or mm-hmm. winter. Anyway, this later twenty twenty four, in software design or computer and computer sorry, stuff computer computery type stuff i forget what the exact title of the major well she is. switched majors a couple of times so and then our our third daughter sarah jane is uh, oh and the second one is married got married in second and third are married and yeah. anyway our, our third daughter jane is is the beginning of college and just mm-hmm. figuring that out and having a great time and then eli graduated from homeschool or legal like legal high school education yeah and i'm just curious because i I won't say that it sent you into a tailspin that's too strong of a term but i think it was a little bit disorienting maybe you know what word would you just use to describe how you felt and maybe talk about that a little bit because i feel like that transition is pretty emblematic of what a lot of us as parents go through when we when these milestones sneak up on us Well, I felt like I wanted to hold still and I wanted to capture it. And I didn't just want to host, you know, a picnic with balloons and all his friends and being like, isn't Eli the best, which you are the best, Eli. He's our number one fan. So I know he's going to hear this. He listens to all of our podcasts. (laughs) Um, And makes comments on the YouTube videos. He's just awesome. But I did, I definitely did want to celebrate him and all his effort and, and everything that he put into that, getting to that point. But for myself, I didn't want to just have that be the end. Like, here's a slice of cake. Good job for the last 17 years. I thought I would really like to take some time and reflect on what I've what I've done, what I what I felt good about, what I didn't feel good about, what just kind of try to absorb and articulate what that experience has meant for me, guiding you know, the education of these five very different people for the last 17 years and myself, because I went about it in a way that I felt that I needed to lead by example. And so I would submit articles. I ran a marathon. I I felt so strongly that their education would be impacted by environment and the relationships with those who were leading them, primarily me, that it really pushed me to grow as a person. And so I just, I just, I haven't fully done it yet, but I, I asked all of the kids to kind of share some of their standout moments. And I wanted to be really clear that I didn't only want to hear highlights, all right? Like what were things that really stood out, even the negative things. And yeah, I just kind of want to gather my thoughts on that. I actually want have done some journaling and some writing about it and we were so thoughtful going into it and thoughtful all the way through the process that here at the end, I just thought, I just want to gather it up. I want to gather my thoughts. I want to record them. I want to have a little share back and forth with the kids, let them know what it's meant for me and have them be able to share with me and with each other and, and just kind of 
together say, wow, that cannot be undone. We love that phrase. Mm -hmm. That cannot be undone. And I, I think yeah, I just didn't want to glide past it. I think it was my number one feeling is like, this is a big deal and I want to put some space around it. I think if I have one takeaway from this conversation for me personally, it's that to take a moment to reflect and uh, take stock, you know, maybe, you know, maybe have, we had like a little bit of a miniature graduation ceremony for you as a homeschool mom. Maybe that's too strong of a term for it, but just marking the occasion. And then for any parent listening or anybody entering a new chapter, whether it's leaving a job and going into a new professional situation or leaving even a relationship and heading into something new, you know, take time to reflect, you know, I'm a big journaler, we're big journalers. And I think whether you're a journaler or you just want to talk it out with a friend or somebody that you love or whatever, you know, maybe put together like a, a video montage or yeah, photo collage. <laughs> I just think somehow commemorating it or, you know, preserving the essence of it somehow is really important because one, it, it allows me when I do that to really appreciate it more, mm -hmm. appreciate all aspects of it. And then I feel really ready to look at what's going to come next. And that can be another chapter as well. You know, that can be another process of saying, okay, now that I'm done being a parent of kids at home, or now that I'm done with this child and they're out in the world or whatever, whatever that transition might be, say, now what, you know, what, now, yeah. something's going to shift in the canopy of your forest when, mm -hmm. when these happen. And it's not just the, the the oldest kid moving out, but things shift in your own forest. You you might have a layer of responsibility that is now gone. It's going to let light and nutrients reach some other part of you mm -hmm. that's going to let that flourish in a in a new way in a new time. And I think finding joy and discovering that that newness, you know, when a door one door closes, another door opens, is the is sort of the the trope, but. To, but it's real, you know, I guess when one tree goes away, another gets to grow up and, yeah. and that can be both kids and elements of your personal life. Sorry, you were yeah, going to say Yeah, no, something. I totally think that when, when something matters, give it some space. If, if you feel like something was a big deal, you can always circle back to it and say, you know, I didn't give that enough space. I'm, I'm not ready to move on. I haven't collected my thoughts on that yet. And you can just go back to it and do it. So in the midst of all your summer plans and fun, please, I would encourage you to take stock of any transition or graduation or new chapter that is starting in your life at this point and celebrate it and reflect on it and appreciate it. And then also find the joy of looking into what the future can hold for you and what you're excited about and what you want to move into next. What could go right? What could go right? Thanks for listening. If this has been helpful, please subscribe, rate, review the podcast because this helps more people like you find us.